Moving on to the next match, Orange versus Raynad, Hunter Mage Warrior from Orange versus Druid Hunter Warlock. So both players are playing a Hunter in their lineup. The first match is going to be between Warrior from Orange and Warlock from Raynad. Which of those uh, classes do you think is favored? Uh, um, it's depends on the archetype. So, yeah, so it's archetype dependent. Like maybe it's Grim Patron, yeah. maybe it's Handlock, maybe it's Zoo, maybe it's usual control pay to win Warrior. Um, well, I'd like I'd like to see Reynard bring back the zoo, right? Definitely. I don't know. Yeah, I mean it's a deck that he used to play quite a bit of. I think that's what he's most famous for in the early phases of Hearthstone. So if he brought it back to a tournament format and did well, um, that'd be pretty nice to see. Then again, he's very he he loves his handlock. It's a deck that he thinks takes the most skill to play in the game, or something along those lines. I've heard him say that multiple times, um, and I think it's a deck that he like. I think a while back he mentioned that his thought process, for at least that was the case a while back, the thought process for selecting players into Temple Storm was to see how well they handled playing Handlock because the deck was so, you know, skill demanding. I wonder if well, that's just... That sounds okay, I would say. Life Coach basically says the same. Yeah, well, apparently they're on the same, uh, same wavelength there, so maybe... That's still what Raynad thinks. Either way, I know he likes both archetypes. I don't know how much he likes the mid-range Warlock, you know, the Weird Lock with Nerubian Eggs and Power of Whelming, Smishes of Pain, Demon Lock with Void Callers, but that's a, that's a possibility. Alright, so we should be going into the game very soon. We have the uh, no webcam for Raynad, unfortunately. Why is that? Tell me. It, I don't know. Maybe there's no webcam in M Temple Magic Storm House. Magic Game, you confirmed? Yeah, definitely. I think so. The ghost of Magic Game is back. At least he has a decent picture. Yeah, it's always the same. It's always the same picture. I, I don't know where it was taken from, by the no, way. No, he's, he's making the same face every single time. <laughs> okay, I, I get it. I get it. It's Each week is a new picture, but he makes the same face. All right. But, well, basically, that is, that's, that is his default face. Yeah, that's the default face of Reyna. <laughs> where it's like, I'm not sure if I'm happy, sad, confused, or interested. Um, but hey, he might be just dull. Yeah, I, I don't know what he is. <laughs> He's just like, whatever, man. Thank, thank you for that nice camera you got there. I'm staring into it. All right, so we should be moving into the game very soon. So this is Archon versus Temple Storm, which I think is the biggest rivalry between teams. Well, Renard and... owns both, right? So is that a problem? Yeah, he invented uh, Archon, I think. Yeah. I mean, I know he invented a Maz. I'm just not sure about the entire team. Maybe that was a project of Amaz himself. Maybe he infused Amaz with, um, you know, free will, so that Amaz could make art like Archon. So you, that... you make Reyna the God, basically. Yeah, or at least you know some uh, <laughs> a Hearthstone player generator, <laughs> at the very <laughs> least. Hearthstone so. player generator. That's that's gold. That's a that's a fancy title. <laughs> Reyna is now a Hearthstone player generator confirmed here at Kingwin Pro League. All right, so we should be getting to the game for real very shortly. I'm, I'm wondering, though, if uh, Orange is going to be bringing up a Grim Patron Warrior. Somebody has reached rank 1 Legend with such a deck, but the metagame is in a huge shift. It's uh, on shifting sands on the ladder. But the Grim Patron is great against handlocks, right? Yeah, they are, because they burst down kind of like OTK Warrior used to. Yeah, uh, like area mode. mode Warrior, right? It's basically yep. a free win, almost. And uh, if you play it correctly. And Reyna does... I would say a big fan of Handlock. He is Oops. a big fan of Handlock. And the thing is, I feel like Zoo is maybe... Like, after Nax Ramos, I remember back before Nax when Warriors systematically lost to Zoo, uh, or at least very often. But after Unstable Ghoul came up and Sludge Belcher, then things start to get much better for Warrior. Uh, and that was kind of... You know, the, the it's one of the biggest shifts in the Control Warrior metagame after Nax Ramos came out. But I'm curious to see how that's... Uh, how this happens maybe after Blackrock Mountain is Zoo now better because of Imp Gang boss? Did that change anything in that specific matchup or not? Yeah, well, that's true. Okay, well, it, that's a. We see the hands, but we will not tell anything yet. Okay, now we have the gameplay. Uh, so it's a usual Contra Warrior, I would say, against a usual Zoo. zoo. It looks like Zoo. It I mean, there's a Flame Imp, um, but then again, it might be a mid-range lock. It, these cards aren't Telltale, but they do look like a Zoo deck. Dark Iron Dwarf. Dark Iron Dwarf would say it's not a Demon lock, I would say. Oh, well, that Darewolf Alpha kind of confirmed 
Or at least heavily. No, 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 you can still play that with Alp and Demon Lock, but um, the four the the four mana slots being taken by Dark Iron Dwarf that's um, kind of usual. That would be unusual, I would say. Yeah, Reyna uh, must be happy now to see a fire war axe because that's the biggest oh, yeah. way that warrior comes back in the game like this. No fury win X. Yeah, no win. real big problem. And there's a coin plus defend of Argus in Reyna's hand if he decides yeah, to go awesome. for something along those lines. That that's really awesome. And you know there's no coin for the warrior, so you know the first weapon will be at turn four. So the Unless only retaliation exit, is execute with Taskmaster. On the flame imp, that's got to feel horrible, but it would have been a play. I think he might have taken it if it if it had shown up. But we'll have to see. There is good follow-ups for Orange, but right now he's under pressure and he's got no real way to handle this. And it's not as though this is gonna get better if Defender falls down. Without the X, this um, matchup is so skewed towards towards the Warlock, I would say. Yeah, that's what it used to be like before Nax, and then yeah. War is adapted. But you know, even like, even with the advent of the fire, the Death Bite and whatnot, uh, it got improved. But then, because Zoo disappeared for a while, Warriors have not been teching up against them as much. But since they've been coming back recently, maybe we'll see more techs. And we see a Baron Geddon, which may be indication that Orange is in fact. Uh, teching against the zoo archetype. And Reynad keeps on the pressure, 17 health left for Orange, who's got to have and probably have to use an execute. In the I would say so. Like, you can pop the egg, deal one damage to it, then execute the dwarf and the 4-4, but that's as good as it's gonna get. You get a good armor up, but it's really not that stellar for follow-ups. If only he had an armor smith or even an acolyte of pain here, that would have been great. But nothing. True. Well, hmm. armor up and hope for the best. He's had he has two shield maidens and a sludge belcher. Those could be really important. The he seems to execute though. Do you just drop Doomguard? No, you drop. You have Lothab. to play Lothab. Okay. Lothab is great against Belcher, so it's um, it's okay, I think. You can drop the Lotub right now, just drop the Shields Maiden. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Sludge Belcher would be a sacrifice, and you yeah, have, it, it I guess Sludge nothing. Belcher would have been okay if you played Geddon, but then if a massive minion gets played, then Geddon is also pretty useless. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Abuse of Surge and our Dark Iron, uh, our Die Wolf Alpha. I would say Dark um, Die Wolf Alpha trade the Defender of Argus and I was expecting a, I was expecting Abuse of BGH and Dire Wolf, but... Like BGH the Shield Maiden, but I guess he doesn't want to overextend on the board mm -hmm. coming around turn 7 and the possibility of Geddon. I don't know. Now it's really weak. You're staring at 14 damage. You're staring at essentially lethal. lethal. In your mind right now, you're looking at lethal if you don't do something about the board. So maybe dropping Belcher or Shield Blocking for a desperate Shield Slam is your best option. I don't know. Everything seems weak. Belters are sprunging your agony. That's it. If you top deck brawl next turn, maybe, maybe something happens good from that. But if actually, if you play Belcher, then your Baron Geddon becomes a bit better, I guess. But you've played two executes, so the two damage AOE is not going to matter for the minion you put it on most of the time. I think Belcher armor up is still the only possible winning play or I mean brawl hmm. could help a lot on turn 8 he gets a shield block brawl possibly and this belcher is a sacrificial lamb to the slaughter going nowhere there's uh, there's no hope for orange I would say here no Justin Bieber told me never to say never Great, bro. You don't agree? Yeah, I would just ignore. Wait, is that okay? No, I was gonna say is that no, lethal? No, no, but it's no. not. It's like, uh, it's like just three off with the abusive Doom Guard. You know, you abusive Lothem and then you smash face. What about tap Haunted Creeper? You don't need to play anything on the board. Right? You could just play Creeper alone, honestly, but... Yeah, you can tap. Like, tap, tap Creeper is fine. Yeah, tap Creeper and that's it. 
I would play the Abyss of Surgeon before the later, uh, low tip attack. Yeah, that's what I mentioned. Like, it could have been a little bit more damage output on orange, but ultimately, I don't think it'll matter too much. Yeah, it won't, but... Um, it, it could have been an extra bit of damage. Yeah, if you would play the Brawl and maybe a clear, then Abyss of Surgeon is dead. Yeah. This is a position where if Zoo comes back, maybe Revenge is going to be better than I thought. That crappy card that was announced. Oh, wow. What? The Revenge card, the two-mana whirlwind that deals three. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like against Zoo, usually that's the breaking point as Warrior. Is you reach a very low health total, and if you can't... If you can't stabilize at that point, you have a chance of winning. Especially with the addition of Shield Maiden and, sh you know, the, uh, the whole healing arsenal. I just don't know what Orange can realistically do here. I mean, get in is horrible, but you have to try. Yeah, you're it's dead. Like increasing the damage output anyway. Oh, look, that's like 100 damage. Yeah, there's no way Orange could win that. All right, Reyna's gonna take the first game here. Zoo stealing the game with a lack of fiery win axe for Orange. That's really gonna be a big deal. And uh, the Zoo is now locked from Reyna, which I'm happy to say. I'm glad to see. Zoo is back in the metagame. You're very, happy? Very... Yeah, imagine, I am. I really imagine people saying that like eight months ago. Yeah, but it's... I'm so happy Zoo is back. Yeah, but there, there was no diversity back then, right? <laughs> like, there was literally zero diversity. It was either Zoo or Zoo. Or mid-range Hunter, I think. Or like Control Warrior that was stacked after no, that. No, Fake Hunter was playable, though. Right, then, right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, you're right. And, and there was the, diversity. At least the Hounds, at least the hounds was for two mana. Like Tim yeah, Thor, right. Juggler, Unleash the Hounds. Oh man. That was sick. That was sick. Just sick. 10 6, double Unleash the Hounds with Juggler. <laughs> I remember that. You know, I, it, it's like a faint memory because I just didn't really like that specific type of combo, but it was pretty yeah. crazy. Crazy to say the least. Yeah. So uh, now that Reynad's won with Hunter, he's got Druid and Warlock left, right? Mm -hmm. So that means he's, I mean, Druid and, uh, and Hunter left. Against Orange's lineup, how good are those? I mean, there's a warrior left in Orange's lineup. I'd say Hunter is generally fairly weak against it unless he brought... He can still win. Mid but it's not, yeah. It's going to have to be a really fast start. Fast start until slow start of the warrior. Yeah, no win axe, no cruel task, no armor smith. Um, a lot of cards really need to go well. No for Taskmasters the for the lappers. Yeah. Everything needs to go wrong, in effect. Well, kind of like last game, actually. Kind of like last game. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's going to be Reyna's Druid versus Orange's Warrior. All right, well, let's see if that goes well. I, I read a post recently on the on the Reddits that was talking about the Conquest strategy. I think it was written by Hoj, uh, or Hoy. I don't know what his name is exactly, but he was saying that the uh, the tendency for a lot of players who enter Conquest is to stick to a losing deck as long as possible until they're down to only one loss away, then they go for tiebreaker points, if possible, or reverse sweep. I um, think it doesn't really matter. Yeah, in the end, you end up having to face off against anything. But he did some... some analysis of his personal preference. I don't think it's subjectively better, because in the end, you still have to win with everything. But... it was an interesting read, nonetheless. Interesting, but I think he was wrong. All right, so we see Reynad's Druid. Seems oh, like he has the Wild Grove and Shade. Yeah. That's, um, I would say, perfect. Well, he has the coin. Uh, but I, I still think those two cards is something that you want against the Warrior. Well, Wild Growth is guaranteed to get you value anyway. Against the slower decks. Like, I guess there's a good argument to be made to throw it back against Face Hunter. Like, it's generally not going to be the most helpful thing. All right. Wow, the Innervate. Oh, wow. Reynad finds the turn one shade. Infinite growth. Well, that's going to become big very soon. And this, ladies and gents, is how you curve. You get a wild growth into Pilot Shredder on turn three. I, I think I saw, saw something like this a few minutes back. Yeah, I think uh, Fresar was playing, right? Yeah, I think so. It was a hand similar to this one. But th this one is even better against this type of Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, like, it, I guess this one is perfectly tailored around the, the Control Warrior matchup, where the other one was perfectly tailored around the Face Hunter matchup. 
Oh, he activated the, the shade. I have to say I'm a little surprised, but there's yeah. gotta be reasoning there. I guess Whoa. it leaves it lets the shredder live because it forces a war axe development. Or a, like a or a coin death bite. Well, I have to say I'm still a bit surprised. Execute would have been you know miserable for him. True. Well, he does find a pretty good board though. That's not bad. You have you still have one chance to draw yeah. Emperor next turn. The coin is dead, by the way. That's the thing. That maybe what that's what Reynad was hoping for. The his opponent would play Fire War Axe and then try to curve into a turn five Sludge Belcher possibly, and then ends up whiffing because he's he, you know he can't use the coin. Huh? Mistress of Pain. Well, that's awful. Wow. That's actually that's an amazing draw from Reynad. Oh my goodness. So do you wrath for card draw here uh, for for 3 damage here to just give yeah, one yeah, yeah. Of orange? I think you have to. You just then the hero, question is hero what power. do you do? I would say it's hero power. You have so many targets for the big game hunter in, in the warrior you just can't play that card. No oh, unfortunate but Yeah, it is unfortunate but I would say that Harrison Jones being top decked is a yeah. great great thing. Yeah, the ability to draw is going to be good enough. And now Orange is down to 12 health on turn 6. Reyna's start was beyond awesome for him. That's Orange not bad. Picks up a shield slam to go alongside a shield block, which I think we're going to see come down yes, pretty definitely. much right now. He can't allow any more, any more damage. It, it, just That would just kill him. Yeah, one more hit from that low thumb and that could seal game, in effect. And next turn he could play... Belcher into Taskmaster if he needs that, but no, he won't need that. Wow, this sucks. Yeah, so I think what, oh my god, wait. What you really want here is for your opponent to play Paladin Sky Golem, so you can play Death's Bite, kill a Sky Golem, get Arcanized Soul Priest. Mm. Or like, you Cruel Task, execute the, um, the, the, the Sky Golem, then you kill the... You spawn a knock and I, then you attack the Mistress of Pain to insta kill your opponent. I think you have to play Harrison Jones. That's so the weak board. Yeah. You can't allow Warrior to just, you know, develop the board when you do nothing. Is is BGH better than Harrison? No, ever? it's strictly worse, I would say. There are more targets and there are more impactful targets for the Big Game Hunter than for Harrison Jones. I have to say, I think the card draw could be a really big deal, but we'll see what uh, Reynad ends up doing. He's gonna hold on oh, to Harrison passes. Jones. All right. But though we know, we know there will be no weapon for like three more turns. Well, well there could be. A, you... That's a really good bait for a death bite, though. Like you're baiting it really hard by leaving just a one four on the board. But or it would be like, okay, why didn't he play a card? Double swipe. Possibly. Harrison Jones, Black Knight. Right, there's there are some options. Why didn't he play a card? So he will just play. He will try to play the cards that are not affecting. Um, affected by tech. Yeah, basically. affected by battle cries. All right. Well, let's see what Orange decides to do. He drops the Sylvanas. Yeah, that's the best. And Reynad. And Reynad picks up a Thoughts of Nature. That's a pretty good draw, though. Actually, how much do you just go full, like, full trade here into... Like, trading Sylvanas away for your swipe is probably the only thing you have to do. The thing is, your lack of follow-up is kind of worrying. Right now, it needs to find his... combo. Yep, that's what he needs to find. That will be Belcher turn. Oh, wow. Well, that is not bad. Gets himself the Mistress of Pain and the Sludge Belcher. It's really great. I'm not sure if I would just play the swipe without finishing the Sylvanas, you know? It was very passive. Well, the Shade of Nax could definitely work out. Keeper of the Grove would be an amazing draw for Reynad. Getting himself a science on that first Sludge, at the very least, would do something. 
Although right now I have to say Orange is looking very strong. Like he's got the shield block. He's got another sludge belcher on the back end. His survivability is really solid. Now he's got to be wondering, do I feel like Baron Gettening to kill a shade? Um, and I don't think that's a really good answer. As long as you have two sludge belchers, you don't have to. Reyna just stopped at some point. Like turn five was still okay, but turn six ended in a disaster. Well, this is typically what happens when you don't have the Ancient of Lore, right? Yeah, but Ancient of Lore is usually just... what gives you the mid-game fuel. That's why I would have just played the Harrison Jones. Well, he's undoubtedly going to play it now. I can tell you that much. Yeah, but it doesn't change much. It's like game over already. Yeah, Harrison Jones into a Keeper of the Grove. Oh, well, maybe that will help. Oh, wow. And look at that. Now you can't play both. Mm-hmm. got to play Keeper. And he finds well, a Drake. Okay, that's, that's a perfect draw. Yeah. What? And he plays Rule of Flame, too. What the hell? He was... <sighs> Renan <Okay. laughs> was the first adversary of of just hating that that card. Was he? I wasn't following that. Did he, did he mention yeah, he how was. bad it was? Okay. Yeah, he was like, My god, this card is so awful. <laughs> well, that's been proven wrong. It's kind of like Brian Kibler's predictions about Quick Shot of having a hard time to fit it in decks, but then he ended up playing it as a one-of, I believe, in one of his decks. So maybe Reynad slightly changed his mind because of the aggro meta game. You want to be able to handle Zoo, and I think Druid of the Flame is a pretty good tech against it. That's true. I think Zoo might be the reason why. Actually, I really like Orange's position here. He's in a great spot. Yeah. Really great but spot. What does Reynad need to find? I guess playing Dr. Boom with Drill the Flame would do a bit, but how much really? He still has the shade, so that's great. Yeah, I really doubt, unless he draws Baron Geddon now, which I think is the safest play. Um, yeah, and he does. Well, he does setting have up for Shade now. Yeah. <laughs> so Goodbye, bad. Shade of Nax. And uh, now Reynad's on 9 health after this Baron Geddon, right? Which means yep. he's dead next turn, effectively. That's why. Okay, so Big Game Hunter, Baron Geddon. And, um... Forces of Nature? Lois, uh, I don't know. Like, if you force Forces the nature, nature, you can wipe the board. Which is, I guess, the biggest thing you want to do right now. Yeah. Force of Nature, BGH is probably the only line of play you can take if you want to live. Next in for... For Orange is basically perfect. Belcher, Harrison Jones. Yeah, basically perfect. Oh, well, that's also not too bad. But I think you still have to go for the Belcher just yep. because a combo would kill you instantly. It but just makes too much sense. Now the swipe is also perfect. Yeah, that's why I was surprised. When you said perfect turn, like it feels good on his end because he, he saturates mana fully. But on Reynad's end, it's also oh. not too bad. Okay. Yeah, you have to you have to do this. Oh, no, right? no, no, never mind. I was just miscounting. I don't know why. Seven. Oh. Oops. A little late. Yeah, a little too late. At least you got a creature, so it can fit in. So 5-2 or 2-5? I guess 2-5 is enough. Like, the only thing that kills you is like a death spite. What about the second or Taskmaster or um, Unstable Ghoul or... What else? Um, is, that, is that really a big, a big concern, perhaps? I would say it is because you have the Savage or... You know what, if Reynad finds a second Force of Nature, could he win? No, not because that slime would actually... Well, you'd have 16 damage, he'd be two off. Even if he gets the Force of Nature on the back end. Well, good luck, Reynad. You will need it. That's not a bad draw. But the Execute should seal the game, I think. Yep. Now this execute is actually exactly what Orange is going to need to clear that taunt, if anything. That is going to be more than enough to finish off Reynad afterwards. And the boom bot hits 
nothing very useful for very little amount of damage. So pretty bad boom bot, but it don't it doesn't really matter at this point. All Orange has to do is execute, and he actually gets the perfect hit. No need to play the weapon, and gets the kill on Reyna. So he's gonna equalize the series one to one after that zoo domination on the first game. Orange is able to take the second one. Interesting game though. Like Reyna stopped in his tracks. Yeah, like, it's what Druid does, generally speaking, when they don't get the follow-up draw, right? I think the card draw, like, get it, getting an Azure Drake earlier is very important. Getting the Ancient of Lore as fast as possible mm -hmm. is very important. And I think, you know, as good as Innervate is in Wild Growth, and that is true, they're amazing, they're only, you know, they only shine when you have follow-up card draw, or, or just your top deck threats back-to-back. -back. When like you Frezzar. hit... Yeah, like Frezzar did, right? With just, mm -hmm. yeah, constant flow of stuff yeah, coming out, that is when it shines. Druid of the Cloth in 5... Emperor turn 6, and Scenarius turn 7. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be going on to the Mage versus Druid. So Reyna is going to be going for his Druid versus Orange's Mage. I wonder what type wow. of Mage that is with so many archetypes floating around now. Well, we Orange, got... Orange said that Tempo... He, tempo? he learned that Tempo Mage is bad. Well, I guess I Druid say... is pretty sick, though. I, I would say he would just go into Mech or Freeze Mage. Okay, can't blame him, but... I feel like that's like Freeze Mage and Tempo Mage are amazing against Druid typically. Mech is also not too bad, but I, I much prefer either of the other two archetypes. Fr All right, we should be getting into the game shortly. We see that Freeze Mage is picking up popularity, and especially with the uh, introduction of Emperor Farisian. Uh, I'm sorry, Emperor Tarzan. Yeah, Tarzan is is great. Yeah. Yeah, we just need a Jane. Hmm. Don't worry about it. We got Jaina. It's okay. Uh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> I was thinking about maybe something creative. But... So King, King Mukla, Jaina, oh. and, and Thorson having fun on the Nile. What I'm curious about, though, is whether or not... Um, like, because every class now has a deck to work with Thorson besides Hunter. They're the only class that haven't like haven't been able to use it at all because they're so stuck in that pool of hyper aggressive play style. I wonder if we'll ever see something come out of Thorazen for Hunters. Excuse me, can you repeat? I was having problems with this guy. Uh, Emperor Thorazen Hunters. There are none, right, that I know of. Maybe Medrin Hunter would use one? Yeah. Maybe, but I just haven't seen any of it yet. Yeah. Double Wild Grove, is it good? Hmm. Well, I guess it's not bad. There's a Yeti in that Druid deck. We didn't see it earlier, but... It's a Chillwind Yeti. It should have resistance for freezes. Against freezes. <laughs> and Mechanical Yeti just, like, if, if you uh, if you leave it exposed to freeze too long, it just rusts, and it turns into Rusty Yeti. Wow. Which decomposes <laughs> into five spare parts. For each player. Yeah. Especially the one with Antonidas or Gazette. Mil, the Mill Mage is real. You play Yeti, you Ice Lance your own Yeti, and it decomposes into five spare parts, and then you Antonidas to win. That's some creative game design, dude. Yep, that's how you have to. You have to. You have to design the game that way. Obviously, you add more skill, right? More spare parts, more skill. So, Orange has a pretty decent board, but Reyna has been able to pick up a second Wild Growth. I just don't know, as you said, you know, that second Wild Growth, what will it do in this position? I don't think it's going to accomplish much. No, oh, that's not a bad top deck. He's gonna check. Oh, wow, that Emperor. That's the Emperor. Such a strong card. Oh! In, uh, uh oh, uh oh, Orange's worst nightmares just come to life. And Reyna's wet dream has also come to life. I have a question. If you had Savage Roar here, would you use it? No, I don't think so. Okay. Unfortunately. I, I thought it was worth the 4 damage. Since you have the shade anyway and you have to unstealth everything. But still, that's 10 damage dealt instead of the usual 3 damage that would have been dealt. Um, well, I mean 6 damage from the Whirling Zapomatic as opposed to the follow-up. But now Reynad, if he finds a Keeper of the Grove, could get out of this problematic situation. Nope, does Dr. Boom. He does not. So, Wild Grove Hero Power? I Basically, think so. that's it, right? So he just needs to find another Zapomatic from that Power of the Shredder and it'll be golden. Actually, what would the best top deck be? I think it might be Lord Walker Cho. Like, the best outcome of this. That's not bad. Yeah, that's a good one. 
And Orange Emperor. slams the Emperor on the board. No thoughts given here. No wonder. Yeah. You gain three inner rates. It's oh, balance. One turn one late. Turn late. <laughs> yep. Keep but you got three juggles for that. Well. Oh man, look at those boom bots. And? Like, oh, you can oh, trade now. Wow. Actually, do you even... Yeah, I guess you yeah, have to. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, do you even trade? No what a stupid <laughs> question that is. Do there's you no even you trade? That. Uh, I mean, maybe, even trade. maybe against some decks you can leave it, but not against Breeze Mage. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. Maligos and Orange's deck. So it's kind of like that is gonna be interesting. that in Kingwin. I mean, in the Kingwin for charity, Hype to use this version. Hype uses it, yeah. I think it's pretty good because I mean Malagos, Archimage Antonitis, and Alex Straza and all your spells benefit massively from the um, the Emperor's effect. So by adding another big threat, you're effectively just adding another combo piece for Emperor. Mm -hmm. Well, the double Orange. swipe is great. Now you silence yeah. Musayer, kill the two one of your hero power, right? Or do you swipe phase? No, no. Well, hmm. That's not bad. Yeah, so I don't hate that. Play. Bad. You just put pressure right now while you can. I mean, when else do you need swipe? I guess you might need it against an Alex Straza play where you need to deal 8 damage to 1 minion. That's probably the closest you're going to go to, but that's, that's not going to happen. That's also a losing play. Yeah. You use double swipe on Alex Exactly. You generally speaking don't want to do that. I think swipe face is really appealing. SM Orc. The aggro infection is taking over. Oh, hello, Archmage. I guess Blizzard's the play. I mean, there's already an ice block set up. And then you can Alex if you feel like it. Your Doomsayer could also eat the Boombot hits. You put Dr. Boom in Flame Strike range with the ping on the following turn, or this turn even. Or you ping the armor off before Alexing, mm. possibly. It's a pity he didn't have the Alexstrasza when Emperor was slammed. Well, we'll have to see how those Boom Boss perform. That's going to be a really important outcome for him. Worst case scenario, he can always go for Archmage, Ice Block, if everything goes really, really wrong. But we see from Reynad's hand that nothing is likely to go wrong. And he finds a pretty good hit. Doomsayer absorbing with the Boom Bots. Mm -hmm. He pinks Dr. Boom. Pretty good card, but not good enough, perhaps. Oh, he will. He's kind of forced to use the Ancient of Lore for draw... to draw cards, but. At the same time, you know you have to keep that after Alexstrasza. Yeah, I don't think you can afford to, but yes, you do want to. That Innervate could be useful. Oh, actually, oh, wait. Wow. But you, you put it as a taunt that. player, right? Taunt minion, or you, you keep it so? for a massive he, he used combo? both. He used both Frost Novas, right? So now he has to use um, Flame Strike to deal with that. Well. <laughs> Yeti is okay, because you know there's two targets with 5 HP, so um, Orange is only able to ping one of those. One of those. Yep. He can only ping one target, which means in effect he's going to be able to, you know, Reyna is going to be able to get one attack with another minion. Unless he Ice Lances one of them. But actually how good of a play would that be ever? Well there goes an interesting thought. I mean, you do have Archmage, so you can just keep it. Like, you can Flame Strike now, you ping one target. What if you double Ice Lands, two biggest minions, and force the opponent to deal with Archmage? You get two Fireballs and your Alex. Uh, but your Ice Block is going to cost you two, so if he pops the block, you're going to be in a world of hurt. I still think that might be the winning play, though. Yeah, he goes for that play, keeping the using the two Ice Lands to cycle into Fireballs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see what Reyna does to answer this, because he definitely does need to answer this. Well, here's a really easy answer. There's an ice block, right? So right. when you use Savage Roar, you have 6, 10, 12, point of 20, 12 damage from your board. Then you have Swipe, and you have to find a way to deal with um, 
with the Antonidas. So you can afford to play... Hero Power, I think, to just finish it off with a 4 attack minion if you feel like it. But can I you mean... squeeze both to... Actually, you just sacrifice the Yeti into the 5-7, five, five, then you well, swipe wait, face. Wait, wait, right? wait, wait, wait. You do it with the claw, charge mode. Swipe face, mm -hmm. right? Innervate Savage Roar. Something kills um, the Antonidas with 6 attacks, so it's either do it the claw. Uh, it's probably due to the claw. Yeah, yeah because less four, health. Yeah, less health. So then you just pop the block and go face with everything. Yeah, I think so. That seems to make a lot, a lot of sense, but we'll see what Raynat ends up doing. Because, I mean, popping the block is not the biggest worry. The question is, how do I finish him off after that if he's got another way to, to stall me a little longer, but... But you want to do it as soon as possible player. anyway. Alright, so... Oh, he's roping fast. Uh, he's roping it really rope, quickly here. Isn't that rope faster than usual? Maybe it is. Maybe I, I've watched too much Life Coach. Did Reyna rope? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think it's he at least has queued up the Judo Claw attack. Yeah, There's yeah, no way he didn't. Yeah. And he did. All right, good. At least he's going to be able to get his entire turn off as expected. But now Orange has to play a pretty dangerous game here. He's got Ice Block and Flame Strike. But he can only kill one of the two attack, the two minions with five health. So maybe Ice Barrier is better, right? Yeah. I'm starting to wonder because you can just ping, but then you can't Ice Barrier. You know what? How how about you just flame strike, kill the five five, play ice block, and then next turn you play ice barrier and you live. You can fireball whatever minions left. Well, he's a two, so that would make sense, I would say. Yeah, I think that's gonna be his play because Raynat has zero cards in hand. That's a huge variable to take into account here. If Raynat had any cards in hand, this may be uh, a bit more dangerous for Orange, but at the moment it looks pretty cool. All right, so second ice block is definitely getting popped. Yeah, useless. That'll eat up a fireball quite nicely. True. All right, so Orange has the ability to kill the Yeti and the Emperor, but he's dead to Keeper of the Grove because it doesn't trigger Ice Barrier. What and else could kill him? Uh, wait, wait. He's two already swipes. seen two swipes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna have to be... He has to Ice Barry, we know that much, because Reyna has at least one winning top deck, I think, left. And I think that's about it. One Keep of the Grove is all he's got. He might not even opt to wait. You think so? Well, then, uh, he might then just the second, sleep, ice just... second Ice Barry will just lose the game. Well, do you even attack this one, is my question. Do you just wait for Keeper? I think you wait. One more turn. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think it, that's the only option you've got, yep. is waiting for it. But Orange now, has the Alexstrasza. Wow. That was close. Yeah, I would say it was really close. BGH would be a great play here, but there is none of that. Now Reyna is going to be trying to grind away at his opponent's health for the longest time. That's 23 HP. Like, almost a new game. Wow. Mm -hmm. Malagos. Well, Orange has more than what he needs here. Well, you play Malagos. Do you? Why won't yeah. you play Malagos? I guess you could play it now and just attack with Alex Straza into... I, I think at this point, Orange's lines of play can be as wonky as he wants them to. Well, you play like, Malagos, he can do whatever he wants, right? For next turn, right? It's 8, 14, 17, 27. 27 damage, yeah. Turn. Okay, so it's not lethal. Well, now it is. Yeah, now it more than it is, actually. Still, I think uh, I can't really argue with this. I think this all came down to the really good, like the Keeper of the Grove that Reynad had left. If that had come up, then that was game. But besides that, yep. I think Reynad had no more outs with the Ice Bear being dropped. Low tap kinda too late. Yeah, a bit too late, to say the least. No oh, man, so close there for Reynad. Brought his, he popped two blocks. He got his opponent down to one, and then he couldn't go through the the ice barrier that was dropped. That's the back end. that's frustrating, that's for sure. Yeah, but that's typically the way uh, these games tend to go. Freeze Mage comes down to a lot of really clutch situations. Wow, two dragons. And Reynad concedes. Doesn't bother going through the motions, and Orange is gonna go up two one against Reynad. So that's giving him. A pretty good edge in this series. Now, he's What's got one left? deck left. Yeah, what, what is left? Let us check. Uh, he's one with war. Uh, he's one with warrior, I believe, right? 
Warrior no, and Mage. Warrior. So Hunter left. Yeah, there's a Hunter left for Orange, and Reynad has his Druid and Druid hunt, Hunter. And Hunter. He's one with Warlock. Well, that, that won't be easy for sure. Yeah, it's going to be a coin flip on the Hunter matchup. Um, but possibly... I mean, the Druid is typically unfavored, but there's Druid of the Flames in there, so if that can help... I mean, that's a really good card against Aggro, as we mentioned earlier. It's typically the only reason that you do run it. So we'll have to see if Reynad can get it out as soon as possible and stop the early onslaught that the Hunter tends to press. True. Well... Will Reynad fight for the tiebreakers, so he will pick something else first? Like... I think you could you go for Druid first. Um, if you've got an anti-aggro tech. He's got Harrison Jones for the bow. He's got the Druid of the Claw. As uh, Druid of the Flame, that is not Druid of the Claw for the, the early aggression. And Orange, I've seen play quite a bit of mid-range Hunter, even after um, aggro took all you know took over the meta. I've seen quite a bit of mid-range. I'm curious to see if that's what he brought this time. I wouldn't say so, but... <laughs> yeah, I doubt it as well. <laughs> Almost everyone is playing Face Hunter. Well, it is in fact Face Hunter, unless Arcane Golem started to appear in mid-range, I really doubt it. So this is potentially match point for Orange here, if he wins this game. And against a Druid, I'd say that's not impossible. reynad has got the swipe, he's got the wild growth, mm, but, but it's, it's Emperor, what do you do with that? That's not a good draw, I would say. He has to top deck something really great next turn, I would say. Yeah, I think so, or, or otherwise he's just gonna have to quote-unquote skip his turn with a wild growth and uh, try to recover in the mid game. Orange will most likely play a Hunt Creeper on turn 2. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean on 10-1, then follow it up by, with Glaive Zuka. Most likely. Oh, Mad Scientist. You can play Mad Scientist now. I think so. I mean, you could even... I mean, what, what does it do better than anything else you've got? No, that's... Like, that's just the faster control. you set up... Yeah, the faster you set up that trap, the better off you'll be. Oh. Wow, you want to talk about bad draws? Wait, so if you Wild Grove, Innervate Wild Grove... No, that still sucks, you want short for... Uh, yeah, you'll be time. on one mana off. And it, it basically does nothing, so... Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's definitely gonna Wild Growth. That, that's that much we probably have to expect. The question is, what are the follow-ups that he might even have? Like, he needs to find a 4-drop of sorts, probably a Shredder. Um, swipe, I wouldn't say is dead, but it's not exactly what he wants. I think Keeper of the Grove is probably one of his best top decks, if not the best. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! Okay. <laughs> Reynad's got all the ramp in the world, but nothing to use it on. He's gonna have to find Ancient of Lore very soon. Innovate At least now, Wild Growth one. is one mana. Swipe as well. Orange is gonna have to handle that Emperor as fast as possible, even though... Uh... That's it's not, not a control so matchup. Hard. You you I, might ignore it, right? Can you really? I don't know about that. No, I, I, I really don't know about that. Trade. It's a good trade too, because if it buffed the creeper, then you have to use his face on it. But now gets to keep the full creeper. Um, uh, I guess um, you have to innovate some yeah. loss and wild growth on the back end. That's really got, harsh. And, yeah, it really is. I mean, Reynad's got all the ramp against the wrong matchup. When right? <laughs> when you think about the game, like we see Druid either stomp someone, like literally stomp, or just struggle with everything. Because, as I said, you know, this is kind of the, the situation we, we talked about earlier, right? When we spoke of the, um, the card draw problem that Druid has when they mm -hmm, have so mm -hmm. much ramp. Yeah. They do need the follow-up to it. Like, as soon as you've ramped, you have to have... Getty. Yeah, like, that would have been great, you know, two turns ago. Now you can kill the Hunted Creeper, swipe, and play the Yeti, so that's okay. You, you hope, you hope that this is a snake trap, almost. Do so you there's, get rid of it before the boat comes There's still up. two juggles. Yeah, but it's better than nothing. All right. 
Uh, well, if, if when you think it might be a snake trap, then the juggle gets five free knives. That's a lot. It's not a snake trap. It's obviously explosive, it seems. And then the free hero power for the hunter, which is a big deal. Yeah, you count your opponent's lifespan in hero power ticks. And those two... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh. The oh, two wow. bows are going to seal the game. Reynad needs to find some healing here, or a taunt minion. That would also be a lot of help for him. Taunt? Actually, wait, could he Could he be able to... Wait, wait. Uh, I think Orange might have lethal next turn. Well, he has to find the taunt, I think. Oh, man. That's not it. And if you attack face, and you have to, then you're at 9, 6, 4, so you basically die. Yeah, that's that's game. Yeah, the two damage from the trap is going to seal the game. Maybe those knives, actually, if they'd gone to Sylvanas, would have done a lot more good. But now there's lethal at with orange. One, one, one knife going to Sylvanas will change the game here. Yeah, that hero power count, as you said, you know, that extra one damage was a big deal. Because now orange has exactly 10 damage. Oh, never mind, that was an IRB cowl. Whatever would run a top deck. Well, it might have saved him, because Beak is, you know, two mana. Yeah, but that's... That's just for one turn. Yeah, then you find Savage Roar, then you, you could have won. It, Savage Roar is lethal? Wait, five, five, yeah, it would have been. Nine, it been. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, it, it's really, that, that knife really changed the game. But then again, this is a matchup that's highly favored for the face hunter in general, unless the Druid has an amazing start. Reynad's hand was everything you want in every other matchup. It, it's it, like the innervates could have been good if the wild growths weren't there. Like, if you'd given him something else with those innervates, it would have been so much better. But ultimately, that's not going to happen. And Orange is going to go 3-1 to one for the match point. Those first two series going down extremely fast. Um, I, I guess Zoo and Face Hunter are to blame for this. That's just crazy. And unlucky draws, I would say. Yeah, right. That also helped uh, Snowball Frezar's Druid start against so, the Face Hunter from Garo. Orange goes up to his second win. The same it's, as yeah. Frezar. So he's 2-4. Yeah, well, Fraser is 2-5, but Orange is 2-4 now, and uh, he won 3 one so he was, his time breaker is minus 4. That won't change a lot, I would say. And I mean, Reynad is at 2-5. We, we said it going in there, right? Both players here, Reynad and, uh, and Orange, both of them had a really low chance of getting in the top 5 for the re-invitation to the Kingwin Pro League Season 2, but it's always... Yeah. You know, you always give it a shot, and the option is that every player at the top whiffs completely, and you somehow get in that top five. You want to give it your max chance. Um, so we'll see, but I really don't think one week's going to be enough for Orange to climb back. And at the very least, it's a confidence boost or, you know, a, a display of, uh, uh, I guess, good play in general. True. Well, All right. Um, remember, guys, that tomorrow we'll be streaming the second day because, um, because of the BRM issues and um, other stuff. Uh, we'll be streaming not on Thursday as usual, but on Wednesday. So tomorrow's matches, let me just click on the schedule. You can go to kingwin.net slash pro league and check check it yourself. Yeah, the schedule basically got moved from Thursday to Wednesday as a result of the you know Blackrock Mountain coming out. That's causing a lot of issues on the spectator mode end and in general just the whole client issue is pretty huge. And also for timing purposes, it's also a lot better. So like, for the last two weeks, it's gonna be for the last two weeks it's gonna be. So this week and next week, the Thursday matches are going to be brought earlier to Wednesday uh, as and a result of the matches. Show versus Sixo. So Liquid versus Archon because Stro just transferred to Team Liquid yep. from Complexi Complexity Gaming. Yep. And then we have Kaldi versus Hype, Life Coach twice tomorrow. So he's got a, a lot truth. of matches to catch upon. He's only done five matches, so he's got a total yep. of nine to do, which means two tomorrow and two on the following week. Uh, which means we're gonna have you know a whole lot of Life Coach coming up, a and I wonder if he'll do that well. Fans. Yeah. The, the the last of the, the last matches because he's four to one, um, yeah, but, but everything could go you know really wrong. If you imagine if he loses everything, goes four or five. If he loses to Maz, that might tilt him. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have to see how that goes. So that being said, guys, we'll be going for a short break, twelve minutes break, and we'll be back with the third match of the day. 
um, which I think is going to be, you know, somewhat interesting if you guys uh, have been following the scene. Strivecore versus Thais should be a power match, if anything. Strivecore is currently top of his group, and Thais is just behind. And if Thais wins this, he could get himself the first place in Group Alliance. So we'll be right back after the break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 